What's going on, MS Gym Nation? How you guys doing? Good morning. Um, hey, I wanted to say welcome to all the new members. Uh, my name is Trevor Wicken, and I'm the creator and founder of the MS Gym. Uh, in this place, you are in this house. You are going to learn how to exercise with MS and what movement patterns to use uh, in order to restore your balance, your coordination, your strength, um, and really create a lifelong movement plan, exercise plan, movement practice uh, that you can use to keep yourself functional and mobile. So uh, the past couple weeks we've been doing a lot on, we've been doing these longer series on counteracting MS symptoms uh, for like the lower extremities, okay? Um, so yesterday we finished up with the knee hyperextension full circuit, uh, which got a lot of really good reviews and everybody's feeling good about it and all that kind of stuff. So the next couple days, what I'd like to do is uh, handle some one-off symptoms that people are having issues with um, and kind of address those, okay? So today what we're talking about is, is reducing edema or swelling. Uh, typically, this can happen anywhere in the body, but uh, typically it, it's, it's ha it happens in the ankles, okay? Because with MS, you sit a lot more. You're not moving as much. Your leg is oftentimes dropped into, into dorsi or dro dropped into plantar flexion this way. There's not a lot of movement in the ankle in this front of in this in this sagittal plane. Now this sagittal plane, dorsi or plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, and also uh, the frontal plane of moving into e inversion and eversion as you walk actually stimulates the the there's little one-way valves in your leg that that circulate lymphatic tissue and inflammation out of your legs, right? So you're, it doesn't pool down here. And so what happens is that once we get this muscle pump and all that kind of stuff going, it'll have the opportunity to actually circulate uh, inflammatory proteins and platelets and, and materials and lymphatic stuff back up to uh, your heart. It actually goes up your venous system in your vena cava. And then a lot of times uh, that's used for fuel or it's just excreted through the body, okay? Now, Here's the thing with edema, it can be super duper tricky and you've got to make sure that you're doing it right. Just like everything else we talk about in this place is that MS is tricky. It's not, there's not just a, like a linear formula, right? There's a lot of different factors that play into this. So we've talked a lot about release work where we're getting in and we're, we're, we're kind of, we're, we're getting in there, right? We're going into the muscle and we're getting in there and trying to release, okay? With edema or swelling, it is, it is super duper gentle. You use the exact same techniques of uh, releasing like congestion and, and uh, spasticity and all this kind of stuff in here, but it is super duper duper light, okay? Because in order to move the lymphatics, you want to move it, it it's the lymphatic valves sit in between the skin, the fascia, and the muscle. So if you're driving into the muscle, there's a good possibility that you're actually uh, you're actually cutting off circulation going through there or flow, um, and it's it's not going to really do a lot because you're kind of smashing the the one way valves down and then you're letting them go and and there's a, there's what's called stasis right so there's not a lot of movement in there. So we do still need to take the same approach as re, we we still need to do, take the same approach of of reducing that spasticity around the low leg and the the, the quads and all that kind of stuff in order to make this happen. Okay, but when we do our release work uh, for the actual edema, the fluid movement, the fluid dynamics, it's very, very, very chill. Okay, so I'm gonna move this table up just a bit so you can see. So when we do this, so let's say I let's say I've gone through, um, or let's say I'm, I'm trying to release this, right? So it always wants to be up this way. So if I'm having swelling in my ankles, what I'm gonna do is you don't want to go on the Achilles tendon, there's not much going on there. What, what really you want to do is go to the inside and the outside because the lymphatics run right here. They run on the inside of your leg, okay? So when we work on lymphatic drainage stuff, you go really light. You can even just use your fingertips and what you're doing is you're finding those puffy spots and those congestion spots and you're basically just kind of, you're just moving fluid. So it's really, really gentle, okay? So it's very, very gentle um, to move that stuff. So when we're doing lymphatic drainage, like I, I learned a lot of this stuff from a lot of the massage therapists out there that are really good at this, it's very small. I mean, it's basically like if you were, 
uh, if, 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 your, if your kid was kind of, you know, sitting on your chest and you were watching TV and you were like rubbing their arm or rubbing their back, you're not going to try to release muscles on them, right? It wants to be more of a relaxing kind of just, you're just moving tissue and moving fluid. So you grip, you grip that fluid tension right down here and then it's really slow and gentle moving it back up. Now this takes a while and it takes weeks for it to really go away, okay? Unless you have someone that really knows what they're doing to drain it out. But by you guys moving your calves and moving your legs and getting that spasticity gone and working on mobility, that you, get, you can actually get more mobility in here, with, which when your ankle moves, it'll actually increase fluid dynamics, okay? So even if you're working on you know, releasing, 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 and then you're getting just even a, a touch more, a touch more dorsiflexion, it will help you uh, move that fluid out, okay? So you're not damaging or causing more edema when you release, when you do your release work. It's just different. Okay, so you want to kind of do both. So you do want to get in and you still want to work on, you know, releasing the Achilles tendon, okay, releasing the soleus, releasing the calf, releasing the adductor, releasing the quad, the VMO, like this whole line. So release here, release here, and then you can work on releasing on the backside so it kind of runs up like this. So you want to do that first and then possibly work on some dynamics as far as some stretching with the ankle. Uh, you know, work on some stretching with the adductors, work on some, you know, on the sideline, like stretching in your quads, stuff like that, because we've got to restore movement in the ankle, movement in the knee, and movement in the hip to really get those one-way valves kind of pumping up and getting those, that fluid out of your body, okay? So what I typically recommend to my peeps is that they go do their release work first, right? So I tell them, uh, work, from, work from foot to groin, so you're going to work on releasing Achilles tendon, releasing soleus, releasing gastroc, releasing vastus medialis, and then you're going to go up here and you're going to work on releasing these adductors down this way because anywhere along this track can cause congestion in those fluid dynamics. So you would do that first. So you would release, then you would go in and you would actually add length. So you would work on ankle dorsiflexion. Like I said, you would work on quad flexing or quad stretching. You would work on groin stretching to really get that out. And I probably do dynamic stretching, meaning that you go into the, into the stretch for about five seconds, come out of it, go into the stretch for five seconds, come out of it, because then that teaches those one-way valve from a neurologic perspective to fire and then release, to fire and then release. And you can do that using mechanics, like using structural mechanics to actually pump that fluid up, okay? So then after you do re your release work, then you would do the slow gentle, easy, fluid motion, motion, okay? So, and you can start on both sides. And it's not gonna, again, it's not gonna be back here with these big meaty muscles. It's on the sides right here next to your shins, okay, that you wanna actually pull. So you're actually thinking about pulling those, that, that fluid, okay? And I have had people put their feet up on a block, like if this is my swollen foot, put their foot up on something and then do that as well, right? Or you can even put your foot up on your other leg and you can do that while you're lying in bed, while you're watching TV. Use gravity to your advantage, right? So if you're, if you're stripping, if you're getting mo motion going on in your leg and then you're working on stripping that leg out, gravity is going to pull some of that fluid back out. So you do that on the lower leg, then you get into the groin and it's the same thing. It's just a slow, easy move. I keep wanting to say movement and motion and it comes out motion. <laughs> Sounds like mushu pork. All right, anyway, so it's a motion, like as you're pulling this down, it's going towards your groin. The groin is where the lymphatics are, and then it goes up into your heart. So you really wanna work on just stripping this down and get it nice and loose. So you release, you, you act, like, so you release, then you lengthen, then you possibly can activate, meaning using the opposite muscle group, then you do your lymphatic release stuff or your fluid release, your edema release. So you're going through and you're just working on removing that tissue and just you're you're moving the tissue for it right you're doing it you're you're manually moving that fluid so that you can actually get it to move the way that you want and this is probably we're talking like 50 to 100 strokes um, in in amongst your sessions so you can do it with like broad hands like this you can do fingertips so every time you sit down to do it we're talking like 50 times 
going up this leg, and then 50 times going up the mid thigh uh, because that's what's going to move it. It's not a, it's not a five rep thing. We're talking hundreds of of, mo of movements, hundreds of reps to move that fluid into where it needs to go. Okay, so that's what I would recommend, and as much as you can. Um, for those of you who are having edema, you guys probably do have some kind of foot drop issue, okay? There's a lack of movement in the ankle, and that's causing a problem. So once you do your release stuff, and then you do your stretch stuff, either you or, a, or like a helper, uh, you really want to work on going into dorsiflexion, and then slowly going into plantar flexion. Going into dorsiflexion, and then going into plantar flexion. Going into dorsiflexion going into plantar flexion, okay? Because that's really gonna get the party started. And then when you're on your feet, okay? So when you're on your feet, let me show you this real quick, okay? When you're on your feet, you can, I'll see if I can get back far enough. You can actually, you can balance back and forth, right? So, hopefully I can show you. Yeah, here we go. So when you're on your feet too, like even if you're up on your wheelie walk or something like that, just by moving side to side, just by being like a church bell, ding dong, ding dong, side to side, and then also with butts, guts, blades, kind of going forward and back. I mean, you can obviously hold on to something, but just going forward and back and literally being a church bell. So butt tight, gut tight, pelvic tilt, knees slightly bent. If you do this, you will, you will shut down the valves. So you've got to not hyperextend, and just going back and forth like this, will cause that fluid to start moving as well. Okay, so you release, you stretch, you activate, you flush, and then you get up and you, you, you move, you oscillate, okay? I mean, you can even do a diagonal and go diagonal, like whatever, okay? So that is how you work on that fluid dynamic, okay? That is how you get that swelling out of your legs. So again, you do your regular myofascial release, so more on the back of the leg, okay? The groin, the vastus medialis, then you go through and you work on some stretching with those muscles, stretching with those muscles, stretching with those muscles. Then try, probably lie on your back and then you're just doing that soft lymphatic release or that edema release and you're pulling the fluid. We'll call it fluid pulling, right? So we're pulling that fluid up into our groin, pulling that fluid up into our groin from both sides. Boom, coming this way and then you wanna stand up and then work on shifting your body weight side to side and then front and then front to back so that you get those muscle pumps going which will actually help the fluid come back and start moving where it needs to go. Okay? So that's you know there's not a lot to that it's just an extra adage for what you're already doing. That is how you deal with edema. Now topically I've used things in the past like uh, like peppermint oil. Uh, you can dilute it with coconut oil if you need to, but peppermint oil uh, essential oils are fantastic for vasodilation and also anti-inflammation and analgesic, which means, which means anti-pain. So you would just put, you would just put a ton of peppermint oil on that ankle after you do your treatment stuff, after you do your movement stuff, put that on there and that's going to help circulate tissue. I'm always a fan of Epsom salt baths where you can actually stick your feet in and it pulls that water out through osmosis. Um, those two things are pretty powerful. So once you do your mechanical treatment, then you can do your topical treatment uh, or submersion treatment where you're doing peppermint oil and warm water, peppermint oil just on the skin, peppermint oil and Epsom salts or just Epsom salts by themselves. I highly recommend using peppermint oil for that. It really, really does work. Okay, so that's what I got for you guys today on edema. Uh, it does work. You're going to have to stick with it. Um, if you can find a lymphatic drainage specialist, they will definitely help you out. Uh, typical fitness pros and even physical therapists, they don't have a lot of training in this. Like I was fortunate enough to be around this woman for like two years and she taught me a ton of really cool techniques. Uh, but that you got to find the right people. But if you don't have anybody in your area, I'll be your guy. <laughs> okay. So if you like this video, go ahead and like it. If you want to comment, comment away. If you need any clarification on anything, and I will see you guys later. Have an awesome day.